Research project you asked for. Hmm. I'll take a look. Chief, Mr. Howard has arrived. Let him in. Stella! I haven't seen you in ages! Mr. Howard, didn't we see each other last week? Oh, then it's been more than seven days. Come, come, come. Sir, the research project you asked for. Would you like to see it now? Not now. Can't you email it to me? Sure. That will be all. And what can I do for you today, Mr. Howard? <laughs> I heard that you made great progress, so I wanted to see for myself. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. We're just doing our job. You're too modest. I also came to see my old friend. Maybe grab a bite together? Uh, but you just got here. Wouldn't you like to see the project first? The project? Hmm, of course. Tell me about the project. All right. Right now, the number of pests across the country is below the warning threshold. Our system in Kaohsiung is down due to the typhoon. I've sent a team to fix it, and it should be back online shortly. In Jai, the detected number of pests is up due to abundant sunlight and rainfall and high fruit and vegetable production. We will continue to monitor the situation. Please. Tell me more. Many environmental factors may be associated with the population dynamics of pests. It is possible to identify major factors that lead to pest outbreaks by analyzing the environmental parameters measured by our monitoring system. Possible factors include temperature, humidity, rainfall, wind speed, wind direction, and illumination. In other words, our goal is to predict when a pest outbreak may take place and under what kind of temperature and humidity conditions. Using the environmental parameters provided by our system, researchers can conduct statistical analyses to identify the factors that cause pest outbreaks. Based on historical pest-related data, our system can provide one-week pest population forecasts through endogenous and exogenous regressors. <laughs> Very good! Everything is under control! What next for us? Next for you? is lunch with Mr. Wilson from Academia Sinica. Are you psychic? How do you know about this, huh? Oh, I don't want to keep you. We can have lunch when you're available. For you? I'm available anytime, anytime. Uh, I Mr. Am... Wilson is waiting. Hmm. Can't you let me finish my sentence? Oh, Mr. Howard, uh, don't be mad. Oh, I'm not mad. David was just trying uh, to remind you. Yes, yes, you're, you're right. You're in a hurry, right? I, I should go. <laughs> I'm in a hurry, I have to go. Uh -huh. What's going on? Is this? We can see the number of pests detected by each sensor node from the monitor. Some are well into the red, which means that the pest population has reached the alert threshold. Is it serious? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just so nervous. Please, go on. We deploy a large number of wireless sensors in the fields to monitor different kinds of pests. For example, tobacco cutworm is one of the major pests found in tea orchards. Both larvae and adult tobacco cutworms are active during the night. Here, we see an adult tobacco cutworm being counted upon entering a trap. Then the counting data will be sent to the gateway. Meanwhile, the gateway collects meteorological information, including temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, rainfall, and atmospheric pressure. During the day, the same method is used to monitor oriental fruit flies. Sensors and the gateway are responsible for sensing environmental data. Data is then transmitted to the control center for further analysis. The increasing pest outbreaks have many farmers worried. Right now we are all waiting for further instructions from the Pest Management and Control Center as they continue to search for ways to reduce the damage caused by the outbreaks. Mm. Initiate the Integrated Pest Management Program. Sir.
Hello? Hello? Yeah? Good job, good job. Well done. <laughs> 